on today's episode of the North American Journeyman. I got a tan in Costa Rica. Okay, there's a lot to talk about because a lot of stuff has happened. So I'm going to try and take you through it to the best of my abilities. But it's been a little bit since I've played because I've been out of the country. We'll get to that. But anyways, here's the save, right? CONCACAF dominance. Here's where we left off. The Honduran national team. We got spanked by Italy. Um, I'll show you the World Cup. There was a surprise finalist. The winner was Portugal, and they beat Senegal in the final. Wild times. But anyways, you can see the performance. Germany made the semifinals. France made it through. Australia made it to the quarterfinals. Nigeria versus Senegal. Crazy stuff. Obviously, we lost out in the second round, but it was a good time. It was a lot of fun. So then, I'm stoked to keep things moving in the right direction with the Royal Society. And we're getting ready for the Central American Cup. Boom, here we are. It's ready to go. It's drawn. It's the next game on this day. And it happened again. The database has an issue. And those of you that know me from the Silesia series, which I started, know that we made it about 20 episodes in and then couldn't continue. Well, here's the issue with this competition. The rules make it impossible to play because they're mixed up with the rules for the Canadian Premier League. So there shouldn't be any squad selection stuff. This all this is all match rules or whatever. It's it's registration and stuff like that. So you can see that in the Central American Cup it says that there must be no more than eight non-Canadian players in the first 11. So as you can see, all of these players are foreign for this competition. So it, it generates some great out players, which, hey, I mean, you know, you play three great out players, fine, but no, they have to be great out they don't even have to be grayed out. They have to be Canadian. So the only way to go through this Central American Cup competition is to just simulate the games. And that's stupid and frustrating. And it really bothers me. Because all of our hard work has basically gone out the window. So throw in the towel, call it quits. We're done. The series is over. Pack it in. Except I decided in frustration to dive into the editor, figure out what the issue was with the rules, go back in, and then start up another save and get us back to essentially the same level that we're at now with a bit of a different storyline. So I did this all in my own time. And I didn't really know if we were going to be able to continue this, but we're picking it up. We're persevering. We're continuing on the save. So all this stuff that happened with Delphines, the Caribbean Cup Championship, all those leagues, all the stuff that happened with the Royal Society in Honduras, that's all Football Manager 24 North American Journeyman canon. North American Journeyman Cinematic Universe. All that stuff happened. But we started a new save. So let me load into it. CONCACAF Redux. We're unemployed currently. 
We're actually a couple years into the future as well because some stuff has gone down. So how this started out was I basically said, you know what I want to do? Because in the previous save, the biggest issue was getting coaching courses. So I decided to just apply to a bunch of teams and get them to promise to give me a coaching course, whatever level it was. And then we would go from there. And that's what we did with our first job, Western Warriors in Bahamas. And we got the coaching course. And um, we picked the job up after this. They were playing in the Caribbean Shield competition. We picked up the job right after they lost this game. So we didn't even coach a single game for this team. We got our coaching course and we left. We tried to get a second one and they said no. And I said, okay, see ya. And started applying for other jobs and trying to get them to promise giving me a coaching course. And there was not many takers. But then, without having coached a single game for any senior team or anything at all, I think we did this friendly. I think I coached this friendly. We got an interview at Olympia in Honduras. And they gave us the job. So my first ever senior coaching cap was with Olympia in Honduras, who's the most reputable club in Honduras. They were a little bit down and out when we were at Royal Society in the previous save, but wild stuff. So in the season that we were there, Let's see, we picked up somewhere around here. I think it was right after they got knocked out by Atlanta in the CONCACAF Champions Cup. In the closing stage. And see, like, we did pretty well, right? I got fired here. So that's right. I won one, two, three, four, five, six games. Drew one. The second time I got a draw, I got fired. Because underneath the club vision screen, they blamed the opening stage performance on me. And so, they, so the, these last three, four games, it was always like, Captain Ellis' job under threat. Could be the last game. If he doesn't get a good performance, he could be fired. A bit a bit buggy, I suppose, but I don't know. Kind of right in line with things how going thing how things go in Central America, anyways. So, anyways, we got fired without losing a single game in Olympia. That was dumb. So then we picked up a job after that in Guatemala for Comunicaciones. And it was the same situation. Should have been this season, I believe. We picked up the job here. We lost, I think, our first game, maybe. Or maybe we picked up the job after this game. But this entire time running through, we were dominating. Top of the table in the closing stage. And they blamed the opening stage performance on me, even though I wasn't there. So my job security was very insecure pretty much the entire time I was in this job. Same as, same as Olympia, very insecure. We struggled in the playoffs. We, we still were allowed to coach because we had won. We were the top position in the closing stage. Top eight go in. Quarterfinals. We lose the first leg, but turn it around. And then we win against Coban and Perial. And I'm going, we're going to win this league and keep this job. And then in the second leg, we're up two to one. And this idiot gets sent off in the 15th minute, who was mad at me all season because he's too good for the team. And then we can't hang on. And we end up going out in the semifinal. And I get fired again. 
So this save is not going as well as Real Delphine or Real Delphines, Real Sociedad, and uh, Dolphins of the East, the Bell Delphines of the East. This is going horribly. So I'm going, well, I don't think we're ever going to get back. I think the series is done. I think it's over. And then we pick up a job in Trinidad and Tobago. I'm going, you know what? We're backsliding. Because here, Liga Nacional is the seven. We went from the fourth best league to the seventh best league to the tenth best league. And we go here and we pick up this job with TLA Rangers. We're picking up coaching courses all throughout this process, though, so at least that's going in the right direction. And this team, when we picked them up, they had finished, I believe, second this season. Yeah, they finished second this season, 24-25. So, we're jumping straight into the Caribbean Cup with TLA Rangers. In Trinidad. Awesome. Struggle in our first game against Harborview, but we get out of the group, win in the next three games, beat Seabow in the semifinal, make it to the final, lose 2 0 at home to Harborview, and then in the away leg, we dominated. They got an early goal. And then we just dominated the match, scored three goals, brought it to extra time, down 3-0, tied it up 3-3. We pushed for a winner, and they won. So we didn't win the Caribbean Cup. But upon being hired in this job, I got them not only to agree to give me a coaching course, but also because we were semi-professional to turn the club professional. And this whole season was played. We, we made it to the Champions Cup and lost to Tijuana. And then we just dominated the league and won the league. And then we turned the club professional. And then we got budgets, which was 250000 something like that, per year. But after they turned us professional, I think it's the same budget. Two million. Two million per year. So I'm going, we're spending all of that money. I, I, we had a transfer budget, I think, of a million. And wages of up to that. And I just dumped it all. And brought in a bunch of crazy players. We had a scout that had, or a staff member, I'm not sure which one, that had knowledge of African teams, of Ghanaians and Nigerians. And we brought in some absolute ringers. This goalkeeper, we bought a goalkeeper. Let's see if I can find transfer history. From the United States. Right here, Cole Jensen. We spent 56k on him. His wage was three hundred thousand dollars a year just for him. He played one game because we found a better goalkeeper. Because I was going crazy with the money. And we had massive, massive squad turnover. But I'll show you I'll show you some of these guys that we brought in. This left back, Tanko. He's a bit of a beast. Oh, it's not really showing the analysis, but oh, he's that's the attribute. I can show you his mentals, like those. Like he's good. He's a solid left back. We trained him right back too, because I was struggling for right backs. We brought him in. That goalkeeper I showed you, I'll show you him fully. Davidson Obadai. This guy, he's 21. Probably get a Ghanaian cap here in the future. Look at that mentality. Everything's there. Just a little bit on the speed, pace side, acceleration, and pace. This guy's crazy good. And then we actually were able to even bring in... I'll show you one. I'll show you two more. This striker, because we might bring these guys into our next job, which we'll get there. Just hang on. I, there's a lot of story to tell. This striker, he's a beast. Brazilian, 20 years old. Honestly, hasn't really performed as well as he probably should. But we actually brought in, he was a uh, Luxembourg primary nationality with an American second nationality. And he was a next gen top 50 player. I forget where he was ranked, but I was keeping an eye on him for a long time. And eventually, after we got all this money, 
he agreed to come here. And his name is... Trindotti. Luke Trindotti from Vermont Green FC. He's 21 now. He's got 41 caps for Luxembourg. Apparently likes to play up top. We always played him out here. His mentalities have a little bit. A little bit. I mean, look where he's played his senior football. IMG Academy, which is where he was pegged as one of the top prospects. I think we tried to bring him in at Communicaciones, and they, he wouldn't come there because of the infrastructure or something like that. And then eventually he agreed to come to TLH Rangers. But his wages, he's still there, by the way, so his wages are like $230,000, but he also gets like $15,000 per game. It's the only way I could get, agree to get him to come there. So we were just driving the money into the red. Massive squad turnover, TLH Rangers and Trinidad. And after winning the league this season, boom, we won the league, dominated it, no issues. We go to the Caribbean Cup and couldn't even make it out of the group. Dynamics, dynamics, dynamics. Our dynamics were garbage. We were easily the most talented team. But we like we lost to Paradise from Granada, 2-1. to one. Just horrible. So I'm going, this just couldn't be worse. This couldn't be possibly worse. But we're picking up coaching badges and driving this team's balance into the red. And the board is just chucking money at me. They're going, well, they reinvested $700,000. They reinvested $500,000. They're building a new stadium. I'm like, this is actually kind of amazing. This is a blast. So we dominate the league. Win again. There we are, top of the... Oh, we let some games slip, for sure. I don't know what was going on. But Defense Force kind of pushed it. We had it wrapped up with a few games left, but still. Still, Defense Force pushed us. We ended up winning the league. I'm going, we have to win the Caribbean Cup next year. Which we went ahead and did. Got through the group. Drew Mount Pleasant. Beat Tavoli Gardens from Jamaica. Kind of Jamaica upstart team. And then played Mount Pleasant. And held on for a 3-2 aggregate to win the Caribbean Cup. So we got that one knocked out in this new save too. Cool, right? Cool. We're already into 2028, so we're a little bit further into the future. Um, but because of this performance, we go straight into the round of 16 in the Champions Cup. And this team's good. Like I showed you some of the players. Here's how good we are. Scrolling, scrolling, scrolling. Look at that. Cruz Azul away. In front of 33,000 fans in Estadio Azteca. They don't quite have the following in this game that Club America has. Trinati goes down injured. But we draw Cruz Azul. And then at home, we went ahead and beat him. one nothing in extra time. There's no way goals in Champions League. But didn't matter. We won. And then it ended there. We ended up losing. We played Monterey. It was crazy good. I think they won the league. It's ongoing right now in the current season. Um, let's see if I can pull it up. Was this our year? No, it wasn't. I think it was... Oops. I think it was this year with, here's Harborview. No, maybe it was 27. Am I, am I missing it? Yeah, here's Harborview. What year was this? No, it was current year, I guess. Is it ongoing? It is ongoing. Okay, there it is. Yeah, they did lose. That's right. So they made it to the final and then lost to Pumas. 
But we made it. I mean, Monterey was one of the best teams for sure. Pumas has won the last two. Cincinnati grabbed a win in 2025 in this save. But as you can see, it's been it's been Mexican dominance. So that's all good. We win the league again. Easily didn't oh, invincible. Only gave up 11 goals in the entire season. And then some jobs become available. And I decide to quit TLA Trangers and apply for some jobs. Let's look at some other stuff real quick. See how the World Cup went in this save. Italy won. Looks like Turkey's the next host. Italy beat Netherlands. England made the semis. Netherlands. Any surprises? Not really. I mean, it's no Portugal versus Senegal in the final, that's for sure. There's no Honduras. But anyways, like I said, this stuff isn't canon. It's the previous save that is. But I quit the job. What's been going on in the Central American Cup? Saprisa won. They've won the last two. Alajuelense got one. Let's see they're going on right now. It's drawn. It's ready to go. And we finally did it. We finally got an offer. Right in line with my vacation where I got this tan because I left the country and I went to Costa Rica and I went and watched a game in the CONCACAF Champions Cup in real life. And this is the team that we are going to next. La Liga Deportiva Alajuelense. And I went and watched their game. And so the next episode isn't going to be any football manager content. I know this one's just been me talking about what's happened to keep this save going. But I took a little trip and I went and watched a game. And it's going to be a little bit more like a travel blog type thing. But don't miss that one because there's some fun stories and stuff in there and some interesting things happened. But uh, I went and watched their game against New England Revolution in the CONCACAF Champions Cup, and it was really cool. And I'm stoked to continue this save after all that mess happened. And here we are. We finally got one of the dream jobs. And all the times we went in for Saprissa and we even went in for Alajuelense, we actually went in for... Cartines, who's another team, in Liga Primero Division de Costa Rica. It's called Liga FPD, I believe. Cartagines. It was right here, and they offered us the job, and I delayed twice, and then said, no, I'm holding out for Alajuelense. We've been throwing caution to the wind in this new reduxed CONCACAF save to keep the thing going after that little issue we had. But we're going to accept the job and we're going to jump in with Alajuelense. So I guess we might as well just jump in and just show you. Because we got it. Let's negotiate. Watch me fail the negotiations. Let's just go for 400. Two years. They take it. Boom. It's the coaching badges. We're in. They had a different person who was potentially favorite, but I don't care. It's us, baby. Liga. Liga Deportiva Halo Holense. So I'm back from Costa Rica. I had a blast out there. But now we're continuing on the save with Alajuelense, who's my new club. And I'm stoked. Let's just save this. It's been a long journey. 
but I'll take you through some of the stuff that happened actually in Costa Rica going to watch this club play against New England Revolution. It was a good time. And I'm going to do some more stuff that's a little bit outside of Football Manager 2 on the channel. But thanks for listening to me talk about all the stuff that happened to get to this point. But from here on in, Alahu Lindsay is the team. And we're going to go ahead and win a Central American Cup, which starts in 15 days. You can see the rules no longer say anything stupid about Canadian players because I fixed that. And because of the performance, actually, I think we're in the... Um, Champions Cup as well. See, they made quarterfinal. Continental places playoff. They won on penalties to qualify after they got knocked out in the quarterfinal by Real España. So we're in the Champions Cup. We're in the Central American Cup. We've got the second best team in the league we want to be in. I'll introduce you to the to the boys next time around, but please like, subscribe, follow the channel if you're not doing that already. Thanks for listening to me talk about all the craziness that's going on. And next episode, don't miss it. Me in Costa Rica watching Aluhalense. We'll see you next time on the North American Journeyman. Adios, muchachos. All right, here we are in the office. Just hanging out, getting ready to load into this save. Just testing out some new equipment. Uh, there we go, we got all the upcoming episodes scheduled because we are about to go where this guy's gonna go. Let's load into this save, see what's been going on. There I am, unemployed. Let's take a look at the inbox. Boom. It finally happened. We finally got a job offer from a club in Costa Rica. So you know what that means. It's time for us to pack our bags. All right, bags are packed. A couple little things to finish up. Pack up the cooler in the morning. Let's go get a couple hours sleep because we got an early flight. <laughs> <laughs>